Hello everyone, it's Vicki at Stamp with Vicki. Welcome. Today we're going to be creating a slimline card using the Summer Days Host stamp set. So you can earn this stamp set when you either place a $150 order or if you gather some friends together and place orders totaling at least $150, you can get this as your host gift. So it's adorable and a lot of fun, especially if you like to color. I did use the Itty Bitty Birthdays Happy Day stamp as well. And that Itty Bitty Birthdays is one of my very favorite stamp sets. It just has so many great sayings in it and they are the perfect size when you just need a little bit of something. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get right into the card. So slimline cards seem to be all the rage these days. And here's the one that we're going to create today. So you can see I took a lot of time to uh, watercolor. We're gonna watercolor. We are going to use a little bit of the blends. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. We will also create an envelope at the end to so you can send your card because it's, <laughs> it's a different size. Okay, so I am taking a piece of Poppy Parade cardstock and the size of this is cut down to seven by eight and a half inches and it's scored in the center at three and a half on the portrait side. I will also have all of the uh, measurements and products listed in the, in the um, comment section. So we're actually going to go ahead and put this aside. I just wanted to give you those measurements first. I used the shimmery white cardstock, I'm gonna pull in my, my mat here. I used shimmery white cardstock to give a little bit of zing, which I know you probably can't see on camera, and that's okay. But um, yes, so I used it to give a little bit of pizzazz to the card, because if you know me, you know I love a little bit of, I guess glam, but more sparkly, glittery kind of thing. So we're gonna be using some Winko Stella today as well. And so to start off, I stamped my images in Stays On Ink. So we're using Stays On Ink today because that it, the Memento Black is a water-soluble ink and that will um, bleed, you know, and smear as we color with our watercolors today. So we're gonna use Stays On, it's a, a solvent ink and it will stay put. This is what you wanna stamp on anything non-paper related. So you can make coasters with the stays on um, or anything you wanna color with watercolors. Okay, so you have a sweet little girl sitting under, oh, oh, <laughs> that's kind of funny, I left the top on. Well, we're gonna try it again. Um, that's hysterical. So we have a sweet little girl sitting under the tree. And there we go, reading her book at the park or wherever. There we go, there's our sweet girl. And this says, it is really a lot of fun to create a scene with. And I love the idea with the slimline card uh, to create the scene. So we have what could potentially be her little brother, excuse me, flying a kite. We're gonna put him, I'm gonna stamp him up a little bit higher. I do end up, you know, I want him to look like he's on a hill when all is said and done. The last thing that I'm gonna come in with is we have a little stamp with a couple of clouds. And they're just gonna kind of be floating in the beautiful blue sky. And let's see, get a couple up here. There we go. So you can see it already starting to come together. Now normally I wouldn't stamp this on, with these stamps on the foam mat, you don't need it like you do with the photopolymer stamps. It was just uh, happened to be there because I wanted something under it for watercoloring, which we're going to do now. Okay, so this is actually gonna be the first time I'm using the new water painters that I forgot when I did my live the other night and I used this set 
that uh, we had the new ones and I and I had them. So we're gonna go ahead and use these. Now, if you've stamped at all or you know use our products, Stampin' Up products at all, you know there's many different products. Well, you can use the products in many different ways to watercolor. So I am squeezing the ink pad to get some ink out. And you'll see that in a second. There we go. And you can just go ahead and drip some water in. I think you should be able to see that okay. Um, and you can play, you know, with how light or dark that you want it. I'm gonna, I want it pretty, pretty light. And I'm gonna come in with a little bit of, you know, additional texture on it. And I'll explain that as I go. We also have the ink refills, which you can also just dot in here. You would just need a dot or two. All right, so let's see. We're gonna come in and just very gently, I'm just gonna make a little bit of a, a scene with some grass. And so this is pretty light going around the tree. You can come in with it a little bit darker if you want to here and there. And that's the fun part about watercoloring. Now, if I was just doing this as a plain background, I probably would have put the watercolor, some water on the cardstock first, but because I really wanna control this around her and even the little boy, I am actually just coming in with the aqua painter. There we go. So the only thing you really wanna think about is blending, sort of blending where it comes together so it doesn't look like there's a line. Now with that said, you also maybe wanna come in with some darker colors here and there. And as that dries, it's gonna look really cool. You know, it's gonna look ununiform, <laughs> if that's a word. Um, to give, again, to give the grass a little bit of texture. So you can see I'm gonna come up here. Oops, that was a little higher than I wanted, but that's okay. Not a biggie. And get around his little legs. There we go. And this will dry pretty, pretty quickly. But you can see there's some, yeah, see that's a little bit too stark. I'm gonna blend that a little bit. I don't wanna line. But I like the different variants and the colors in the grass. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the sky. So this is how, if you haven't seen an aqua painter or watercolor, you know, a water painter yet, is I guess what they're called in the new catalog. All you do to change colors, just wipe it off on a paper towel and bring in your next color. So that's really great. Oops. Oh. <laughs> I still have the older pool party ink pad, believe it or not. And probably, because there's more space, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of extra ink. And remember, you're gonna squeeze the water painter, get some water on there. And at the end, when you're finished, you can always come in with a paper towel if you don't want this in your, in your ink pad. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this over just because I'm a little bit clumsy. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. So you can see I'm trying, I'm a, well, not trying, I am avoiding the outlines of the um, images. Sorry, trying to do two things at once here. So I'm coloring, I'm giving it space, basically. And when you're watercoloring, it's very forgiving. And I want it to have some space so it just separates and, you know, it looks, more like an actual watercolor. And if you put it too close together, the colors could bleed depending, I mean, you can let it dry and that makes it a little bit easier. So, there we go. I know this is a little bit long to watch. Um, one of these days I'll learn how to edit. <laughs> so, okay, I'm gonna turn this back around. Come around the tree. And the colors, you know, these colors, the pool party is incredible for skies, for outlines when you're outlining, especially the image of a, of a person. 
um, and you want to kind of separate it from from background. So it's really handy for that. Okay, so we're just gonna go here and you can even make it look one of these cards. I kind of made it look like a storm was coming and I don't know that that really wasn't the intent, but I am gonna put a drop or two because we have some space. There we go, that'll make it go a little faster. You can see coming in with even more, more ink. So if you need a little bit less control, you can always add a drop or two of water, kind of like I just did here. But if you want more control, less water and darker colors. Um, here we go. All right. Almost done with this part. Once the coloring is done, it'll go pretty fast. Simple card, really, and a lot of fun. It's actually relaxing to create. Um, I really had a lot of fun. It's an adorable set. They've had some really cute host sets the last few years. Well, they always do, but some that I really particularly liked, I should say. All right, so I'm gonna be careful coming in around this guy. And again, I'm, I am trying to make it where it blends so that the lines are more blendable and blended instead of straight. Okay, almost done here. It's a beautiful day like this outside here today, but it's gonna be, you know, the heat index is gonna be over 100, so it's a little crazy hot. Not necessarily a great day for kite flying. Well, unless you like the heat, which I'm not a big fan. Okay, so you can see it's really starting to come together. And if you layer, you know, more color on it, it almost looks like a little storm is coming in. Now, you see I got down a little bit lower than I would have liked, but that's okay. Not a biggie. So you can see the variation in the sky, which is really great. You could also probably use balmy blue. That would be a really pretty blue color. So I'm gonna come in again and I'm squeezing the water as I, you know, kind of rub this on the towels and it's about clear, clear here. Now for the tree, I'm going to use soft suede and there's a, we have the new, water painters actually come in a pack of three. And, oh gosh, um, there you can see they have different shapes. So I'm gonna actually pull this one out because it's a little bit finer for the tree trunk. And we're gonna skip this one today. Okay. And for the tree trunk, we're going to use soft suede. because It's a little bit darker. So I've already squeezed some water in that. And I do want to keep this relatively dark, so I'm just going to add in a little bit of water. The more you play with this, in terms of you know how mixing the water with the ink, you'll you'll get to know sort of how much you want to mix it and combine it. Um, I'm gonna layer the side of this tree. You can see the size of this brush is perfect for this. There we go. So I'm gonna take some darker ink. There we go. Dabbing it up, it was just a little wetter than I would have liked. And kind of go over this side where there's some shading. You can dab, just be super careful. There you go. And that way it avoids the pooling. I'm gonna come back in with the other marker, or the other marker, the other aqua painter with a shaded spruce. I love this green. As you get to know me, you'll know that I tend to veer toward the brighter colors. Um, all Stampin' Up! colors certainly have a place. Usually, you know, it's by season which would make sense. Spring tends to do the lighter colors, summer tends to be the brighter colors. Um, so that's really fun. But you know, everyone has their 
color families or styles that they are more attracted to. And I just often typically like the brighter colors. Um, you know, some of my friends are more of the muted colors, some like the pastels. It's really kind of fun just to get to know everybody's style. Okay, so you can see here with the tree. And I am coming in, not really tapping, but where I'm making a little bit of texture of a textured edge around the tree and trying to hit all the leaves that are pointed. And I'm doing that because I don't want just like a round blob, you know, an exact round blob on top of this tree. I want it to have a little bit of movement and a little bit of fun. And you can come in where Stampin' Up! has already made those little lines to make the leaves and you can come in over some of that if you'd like to and make some darker areas. And you can see the watercoloring actually kind of does it for you. Um, not always in the area that you want, but, well, isn't that pretty? Hmm, I'll try some over here. Yeah, that's a little bit darker. There we go. So anyway, uh, yeah, I think I wanted to lighten that up. All right, so that's our tree. And this is all that we're going to do with the aqua painter. Um, I keep calling them aqua painters. I'm sorry, the water painters is what they're called now. We have the new ones in the annual catalog starting in, you know, the 2020, 2021 annual catalog. So it's just old habit. I'm going to have to get out of that. I am going to come in with, and I can probably take this off now so it can be a little bit easier to see. Okay. Um, I'm going to come in with some blends and so... Typically, you wouldn't use blends with the solvent-based ink. I am because it's a smaller space, space, and I'm going to just be really careful with it. Oops, my purple one. Okay. So they have two ends. I'm going to take the smaller pointed end, and I'm going to color her little sweater. Make her have a purple sweater. And the thing is, it's just kind of I'm tapping it and not rubbing too much so that... Uh, it works okay with the ink and it seems to be fine. The smaller areas are, are just fine. And then she is going to have crumb cake hair. I wanted to give her brown hair, but of course being next to that tree, there we go. So it's a completely different shade. You can see how this is all starting to come together nicely. So we have a little, and just a couple of dots with these painters really. I gave her gray pants. I'm gonna come in with the smoky slate. You know, I actually left her book white. Um, you could color that, and I'm just gonna give her gray shoes. Little guy over here, we're gonna come in with, this is the light Night of Navy blend, uh, blend, and it makes great denim. It's a great denim color. So if you're coloring some of the other, he's gonna get blue shoes. Oops, made a mess of my finger. And I thought, well, he would be cute with a dark mango melody shirt. Here we go. And a Poppy Parade, hat, and kite. So again, just super, super simple. The watercoloring is forgiving. You can do a light Poppy Parade kite and come in with some blending on that if you want. You could use, for this, you could use, it was a bigger space, you could use the, um, excuse me, the watercolors. Last thing that I'm going to do to color is, of course, I'm going to come in and color the clouds with my Wink of Stella. So we need to have a little bit of shimmer and shine here. There we go. And I know that's hard for you to see, but you know, I, I wanted some color on them, but I definitely didn't think I wanted gray clouds. 
Smoky slate could work. There we go. It's even hard for me to see. I had to open a new Wink of Stella this week. I, uh, it's one of my favorite products, and you'll, you'll see that over time. There we go. There. Give this guy another layer. And there we are. So the only additional things that I added to this card, I added a butterfly gem, so you can see those. They have some nice texture to them and a little bit of shine. The way they're cut, they're kind of faceted, which is really neat. So I'm gonna use my take your pick tool to scoop this off of here. And just kind of, I think it should be over by her. We are gonna use some dimensionals on this project. I have pre-stamped a happy day in Versamark and I embossed it in white on black, basic black cardstock. And we're gonna go ahead and add this to our card. Okay. So, you know what, I think I'm not gonna do, I'm gonna come in with the Stampin' Seal because this is super strong. Sometimes you have to just get it going, but once it's going, normally I wouldn't use this much on a card and I still probably don't really need to, but because I watercolored it, I'm a little concerned that the edges will come up a little bit. Um, so I just wanna make sure it's pretty flat. I, what I didn't mention is the measurements to this. So it's three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So it's a quarter shorter than the card front. So basically you're gonna make it the same way that you would any card in turn, sorry if I bumped that. Um, you know, with the layer and whatnot. It's just different measurements. There we go. I love the red with that. It just, just speaks to me. It speaks my name. Okay, so there's our lovely card, Happy Day. You can use that for lots of things. You can use it for a child. You can do a birthday card with it. Um, you know, somebody does well in school. <laughs> there's so many things you can do with this. Now we're gonna come in, we're going to make an envelope for that, which I forgot to show you at the beginning. And so here is the envelope. And I guess it's a business size envelope. I didn't know such a thing existed. This is what I learned this week. So we're gonna go ahead and make this. I did put the image on because I thought it was so cute and there's plenty of space for your address over here. Okay. So for the envelope, we're gonna stick with Poppy Parade. And the measurements, we're gonna go with a full, uh, full piece of cardstock. So it's eight and a half by 11. And we're gonna score it at two and a half. You can also use your scoring tool if you have one. I have one, but it's just easier for me to go ahead and use my paper trimmer. And that's what it's here for. And I'm gonna open it up. I do love our paper trimmer, it's pretty awesome. And score it at six and a half. And this is on the portrait side, so the shorter side on the top. I thought that was a good way to explain that. Short side, portrait side. And then you're gonna turn it to the longer side, so the landscape side, if you will. And you're gonna score it at one and a half. <laughs> and 10 and a half. And the big thing to remember here, ten, yeah, 10 and a half, is to make sure you use your scoring blade and not your cutting blade. And I speak from experience. <laughs> okay, so that's all the scoring that you'll have to do with that. And I forget how easy it is to create envelopes on your own. If you wanna make a custom envelope with either cardstock or designer paper, it really is easy to do. All right, so I'm not sure what you can see in terms of the score lines, but we have a smaller score line, a smaller rectangle here and here. We're gonna cut those ends out. So we're gonna go ahead and cut, and then we're just gonna cut that off. And this is gonna end up being the bottom of the envelope. Uh, easier for me to see it with the light this way. Okay, again, you're just gonna cut in the score lines. 
And once you make this, you'll see them and it's pretty easy. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna also come in and here's just a little trick if you're making bags, boxes, envelopes, is to come in on that little flap and it doesn't have to be measured because you're not gonna see it, but just kind of angle it in. So that way when you fold it in, it's going to lay flatter and it's just gonna make a nicer, crisp, more crisp fold, crisper fold. So just a little, we're gonna do some more of that over here too. So on this side, we have a bigger space, it's a bigger rectangle, but we're also gonna cut the ends off of this. So the same thing, we're gonna just follow the score lines. And here, here we go. I'm gonna turn it over. You can always save these little pieces for sentiments. You can emboss on them. That's, that's my favorite way to do sentiments these days, it seems. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with this. It's gonna be the top flap of the envelope. And I'm just gonna go in about, oh gosh, I think I was a little crooked. Yeah, it was a little crooked. Half inch, just to just to where the two score lines meet. Uh, actually, probably not even a half inch, more of like a, a quarter of an inch. So like that one, it doesn't matter if it's perfect. Nobody's gonna know the difference. Okay. Um, and also, I'm gonna come in here and do the same thing. So I'm gonna come in this way. Again, it, it just makes it fold more easily and lays better, but it's not necessary. And if you, you know, you start to play with these things, it'll be fine, okay? It took me a little bit when I was learning how to do it to figure out the direction. That's kind of funny. Okay, one more. All right, let's get these off. We're gonna go ahead and score it. So we have four score lines, and you score it, you fold it in to where the score side is raised, if that made any sense, like the hills. You fold it into the hills. It seems like you would fold it into the valleys, but you don't, you fold it into the hills. Okay, you can give it a nice, nice crisp burnish. A lot of people will tend to do tear and tape, and you absolutely could. Uh, normally I would, but I'm gonna use the Stampin' Seal Plus because that's my new favorite adhesive. I like the new Stampin' Seal. Glue dots are really my favorite adhesive, but enter Stampin' Seal Plus, and it's like the superhero. <laughs> the superhero of ad new adhesives. Okay, now before I actually adhere it, learning from experience. I am going to stamp the tree with the little girl again, and I am going to do that while this is open. It just makes it easier. You can do it when it's closed, but make sure my little plastic guard is off so we actually get an image this time. That was kind of funny. All right, and I'm gonna come in. Oops. You know, it has to make the mailman's day or mail delivery person's day when they see these really pretty envelopes coming and wondering what's inside of them and all that. So let me, excuse me. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put this together. So you'll notice there's a smaller side and then there's a larger side, a longer side. So we're gonna actually put our adhesive up here on the smaller end. Oh, where's my adhesive? Here it is. Stampin' Seal Plus. Okay. So, oops. This is the only thing. You have to kind of start them sometime, and it's not a big deal. Um, but once they're started, they are smooth going. And again, because this is an envelope, it's going to go through the mail. I'm using a lot of this. Normally, I would not. Even, well, I don't know maybe for a box, but anyway, you can see that. I'm going to put some down here at this end, which is going to be the bottom. And I'm gonna do it at the top edge. Well, <laughs> it curved, but you get the idea. All right, and now we're gonna put it together. So we're gonna bring in the longer side, and then we're gonna bring in 
the top side. So you can see here why I cut those edges on the envelope. It just makes it look pretty and it's just easier to fold. And we are gonna come up, there we go, with the bottom. Now, ultimately, to seal this, you would put the same thing. You'd use the Stamp and Seal Plus or a um, or the tear tape, and you would just put it right here on the end. And when you go to close it, then it would just you know it would just adhere, adhere, and then that would be your envelope. Okay, so I'm, you know, I haven't sent mine out, or I'm not going to send mine out right away. So I'm going to wait and do that. But here, here is our finished product. So we have. A lovely happy day card, which I think is just adorable, and it's a great size. And we have a beautiful envelope to put in it. I think I can see some fun Christmas cards this year with this. So let me go ahead and there's plenty, plenty of room inside that envelope for that card. And there you have it. So thank you very much for joining me today, and we will see you soon. Have a great one. Bye.